Welcome back to Design Gal. Thank you for watching. Today I want to do a video all about user testing. How to do it, why, when, where, uh, and an overview about the differences between qualitative data and quantitative data when you are getting that data from your tests. So here we go. So first of all, let me make sure everyone's on the same page. When I say user testing, I mean testing a design. What that means is I'm taking my design in whatever shape it's in, putting this work in front of a person that's actually potentially going to be using it gives you this invaluable insight into what they're thinking. And you'll know really quickly where your design breaks. Don't take it personally, it'll only make your design stronger. All right, first question, why do user testing at all? Why take the time, the money? Why get away from actually pushing pixels or doing something else? The reason why is that it is crucially, crucially important. And it's especially important if you are designing a product that someone is going to actually use, right? Because there are a lot of things that we assume that may not actually be true once it's in the user's hands. It's really fascinating to test your designs because you learn things that you never would have thought of when you were in your own head designing. You start to get real feedback from actual people as to what they think of your design, how they expect it to work what they're really looking for in a product like the one you're making, um, if this actually is something that they would use. So testing even early prototypes and continually refining your design with small tweaks to sort of learn from them, see how people are reacting to them and how they're using them is so invaluable, I cannot even tell you. Do it. So it's so important to know if your design's actually gonna work for the purpose it was made for before you actually spend the time building it. Yes, user testing does take some time, but it takes way more time to build something that's not gonna work only to find out later and then have to build it again. So if you make a design and you're feeling pretty good about it, you're confident and you spend all the time and money to actually have your developers build it, it goes out to market, but then it actually doesn't solve the problem it was out to solve or people can't use it or it's confusing. That is a huge, huge, huge bummer and no one's gonna be happy in that situation. It's a lot easier to change a design in Sketch or Figma or something than it is to actually go back and fix the code and the design and all that at once. All right, now I wanna talk about two types of testing and that's moderated and unmoderated testing. With moderated testing, you are there live, uh, in person or over a video or a call, guiding them, asking them questions, getting that real-time response. For an unmoderated user test, this is something where you have tasks or questions prepared ahead of time with the design that you give to them, they review it, they go through the test, and you get their results back. So this kind of test is really more observational. You are not there to follow up with any questions or dig for more details. You are really just kind of observing how they react to your questions and the tasks that you have for them. And this can be kind of interesting because you aren't there to sort of help them and it's really just a, a raw, reaction to the test that you're giving. And I think there's a time and place for both moderated and unmoderated testing. Moderated can be really great when you're trying to sort of really get down to the nitty gritty of why someone's doing something because you're able to ask in real time and kind of probe as to their mindset. But like I said, unmoderated testing can be really useful too because in real life, you're not gonna be there right with them as they use this product. And so you wanna make sure that if you're not there, it still is usable and intuitive. Now, as you're doing your user testing, you are getting a lot of information back from the user and things that we call either qualitative or quantitative data. So quantitative, you could probably guess, has to do with like numbers, percentages, like hard figures of this many people did X, this many people did Y, the percentage of completion is this, and so on. So for example, if you're testing two slightly different designs, you could say, Design one, only 10% of the users completed the task. In design two, 90% of the users completed the task. That kind of tells you which design is better to have them complete that action. Or another example would be kind of on average, the users took four clicks to get to this point in the design that we set out for them. So quantity, right? Numbers, makes sense. Qualitative, on the other hand, has nothing really to do with numbers. It's more about the actual substance things you're hearing, themes that keep coming up, messages you're receiving from your user tests. 
And because qualitative data isn't really something you can quantify, it can be a little bit tricky to sort of pull it out. But you'll start to notice some themes as you do test after test after test. If you kind of hear frustration at a certain point in the test or people always kind of drop off at this one point, or even the types of connections people are making between certain parts of the design. What we get out of qualitative data is more about the user's perception of the design, how they feel about it, and how they're interpreting it. As a designer, this qualitative feedback really helps me get an insight into which direction I should take the design next. It also confirms things for me about what's working and also clues me in as to what's not working or what's throwing off the design that may not be something you can quantify, but something that you're hearing time and time again. And bottom line, you wanna make sure that what you're designing is meeting their needs and you'll be able to pick up on that if you keep hearing these similar themes over and over. So there are a lot of tools out there for user testing. Um, I really like usertesting.com where I can kind of find people all over the country with certain criteria. I can do moderated or unmoderated testing. Really great product. It is a bit expensive, so if you're not in a company that pays for it, it can be a little bit inaccessible, unfortunately. However, I am starting to see smaller companies pop up um, with user testing options for individual designers. I recently learned about two of these called Maze and Useberry, which I'll link below. Um, I haven't personally used this, but it does encourage me to see that there are smaller companies starting to make user testing tools more accessible to more people. It's a little bit more affordable. And you know, even if you're a freelancer, um, these tools kind of can help you be able to test your designs quickly and easily without having to pay like a yearly subscription if that's not really what you need. You don't have to rely on these tools though. You can always uh, source your own testing participants, either from your personal network, putting out a call on social media, putting out an ad, to have people come down and test your product in person or on the phone. So don't let the tools that are out there that may or may not be accessible to you stop you from testing your designs in any way that you can. All this will just help you know that your design's actually going to be valuable and actually solving the problem you intended. If you have experience with user testing or if there's a tool that I haven't mentioned that you really like to use, definitely leave a comment down below. I would love to see us talking more about this and how we can incorporate this into our process. So. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.